You're looking at your record. You started off, you were a striker, correct? Coming in from Holland, great striker, going over to Japan. And most of your professional fights were against nothing but high, high level competition. Starting off, I would have to think you weren't quite as skilled on the ground. You got submitted some. What did you, what did you do then? Because you became phenomenal on the ground. How did you change and became so technical and so good on the ground? You know what? This is really cool, actually. I, uh, I, I just told myself. You know, I, uh, I um, <laughs> was one day I was suddenly, uh, I realized after my last loss against Ken Shamrock, that's when I said to myself, okay, it's either I'm going to learn this game because I didn't like it. Somehow I didn't like it. But I, I'm either going to learn it or I'm going to stop because I might get lucky and become a champion one time, but then maybe next time I lose the championship because of the submission. It would be stupid. You know, that's not what a mixed martial artist is. So I started being vocal because in Holland it's very easy. I didn't have anybody to train with. So every gym I went, I would ask, ask everybody if somebody wanted to train with me. And this one guy, Leon Van Dyke, he said he was 19 at the time, super strong, really good kickboxer. And, you know, he picked up things fast as well. And I said, listen, I need somebody to roll with. And we started rolling together. And we were just watching fights, watching DVDs, watching instructionals. And I go, oh, I'm going to try that on him. But then we realized a lot of these, they had a lot of holes in them. Like a heel who can say, ah, wait, I can easily escape this like that. Okay, so how can we stop that? Oh, when I do this. But wait a minute, if I do this, I can do this. And then it became an obsession. And suddenly I realized, wait a minute, if I create like four or five different setups for one submission, and I am still bouncing back and forth, eventually one is going to hit. Oh, wait a minute. What if I escape it in a reverse? I go immediately into a counterattack. Oh, that would be great because then the people are still with their mind. That, oh, oh, shit, you just reverse, boom, and then right away go into counterattack. That's a moment that you can use for your advantage. And I mean, I, I submitted my wife in the middle of the night six, seven times. <laughs> I swear to God, woke her up. I would put dream because I would dream submissions. My whole house was full with little post its and combinations and, and setups and constantly. And Leon, like, I, I, I give a very simple example. I'm a mount position, I hook the arm, and I go for a straight arm bar. Well, I do this twice with Leon, that's not going to work anymore. He knows his setup. Yeah. I needed to create a new setup. Then, boom, boom, I do that two times, he knows that setup. So this way, suddenly we realized, hey, if we create four or five different setups, we're going to be unstoppable. And that was it. I never lost a fight anymore. I just suddenly, everything clicked for me. And I, I just started submitting people. I, I have no clue how to spot. You know what the, the major catal uh, catalyst was? It was the dumbest thing ever. I don't know even how this is possible. So I'm, I'm a mount position. I put the arm around somebody's neck, like a very stupid thing to do. And the guy reverses me. And then the guy on the bottom said, you know why I was able to reverse you, right? I go, why? He says, you didn't post out. You always need to have a post on one side. So if they roll you to this side, if your arm is around my neck and I trap the arm, I can push you to the side if I also catch your leg. Yeah. And I go like, and that was literally, I, it was, I was, what? <laughs> and that was it. And then I start submitting that guy. Everybody. I never, I tapped twice in my life in training. And I rolled with everybody. And, and one of the time was that I was so drunk the night before that I almost started choking on my own vomit. And that's why I tapped because I didn't need to tap. But you see what I mean? It just <laughs> suddenly it clicked. That was it. And I, I, it's weird. It's very unstoppable suddenly. You had a f basically like photographic muscles or something that I forget the exact term it was, but you reminded me of it with your ability to catch on to submissions. Even with Thai boxing or, or uh, Taekwondo where you started, you would really only have to practice a kick once and then you kind of had it perfect. That was kind of the idea of your, of your athleticism. Is that accurate? Yeah, or is that like, because you're, you're gifted. I mean, that's a cool thing. He recognized that early on right away. I bought my first degree karate black belt katas by learning from a book, pictures, watching at pictures. And I, I did a perfect uh, a, a number five score, which is the highest score you can get. I never in karate or in taekwondo, I never had a four or four and a half. I only had five. Um, that thing what came from how I get my fifth degree in Kikushin, that was a gift from John Blooming, who unfortunately passed away. He was the highest gaijin, so to say, next to Mazoyama, who started Kikushin karate. And we were literally walking on the street in Japan. This is before a Pancras show. And we see, we hear hybrid wrestling, Pancras. And we look at this, this giant screen, like a building is the whole screen. We're talking about 94, mm -hmm. you know? And we go like, what? We've never seen anything like it. And the first thing we see is me knocking down a guy for my first opponent. And we go, whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> and there's this moment that uh, some fighter is sitting in half guard. <laughs> and he grabs coach for an inverted heel hook and he falls back. 
and he wins the fight. And I'm standing there and I look at Joe Bloom and I go, dude, that looked cool. I'm, I got to remember that, you know? The next day I'm in that position, but because I never did it before, I had no clue the amount of pressure. I broke a shin bone in half. <laughs> but that's oh. what, when Ron Bloom gave me a gift as a fifth degree. He said, dude, you saw that move yesterday on the big screen. And today you win a fight with it. One day later, he said, I've never seen anything like it. So, there, yeah, that was kind of cool. 